In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, You who are everywhere present and fill all things, Treasury of all that is good, Master of life, Come, dwell within us, Cleanse us from all stain, And save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're going to look at uh, the Paschal Vigil. There are seven uh, preparatory readings, and then an epistle and a gospel. Um, We're going to do them all um, quickly. That is, this first section of this uh, will go over the the seven readings, um, giving a little bit on each one uh, to help everyone, but particularly the preachers, set the stage. So, let's just think for a minute. The image or the concept of resurrection is deeply ingrained in us. But that doesn't mean that the reality is. You know, when you look at a corpse at a funeral, do you say, this body will rise again? This is not the last word. We're supposed to say that. I'm not saying we don't say that. But has the wonder, the splendor, the mercy of the resurrection ever really entered into us? that when man, with the freedom given to him, destroyed God's work, God himself repaired it by dying on the cross and rising again, rising again, restored the universe to uh, its rightful place. Not that there's no more corruption or death, is that 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 is not the last word. And that is true only because of God's mercy. And so the church at this vigil has these readings uh, which are meant to help us enter in and little by little be awed by the reality of a new and eternal life that I in my bodily frame, am eternal, even though I must pass through death. Why? Because the very Son of God himself became part not just of the race, but as the race subject to God and subject also to death and corruption. God entered that world let all of that destroying force have its way with him and then broke all its power for us. So, as we get ready for this time of year, which is the linchpin of the whole message of of God, starting from Genesis and going right through, God's message is life, mercy, power, and truth. And so we start, uh, the first reading is uh, the account of creation from Genesis 1. And uh, you may wonder why. Well, you see, this is the promise of a new creation. This is a promise, you see, of uh, all of this being done again in Christ. It is being done now. Until Christ came, uh, it wasn't possible for water and oil and bread and wine to mediate divine life. But now, after the coming of the Holy Spirit on the whole universe uh, at Pentecost, even matter itself mediates divine life. And so, We're going to reflect as uh, well as we can uh, 
on each of these seven readings. That will be our task for today. Uh, the text, the first first reading, I'm sure you all remember, that's given to us is Genesis 1-1 uh, down to the end of that account, which happens to end, uh, well, it ends in verse 4, but the, um, the te- our text ends at verse 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Bereshit bara Elohim. Bereshit um, takes on a very particular meaning here. Uh, at the beginning. So reality has a beginning. God has no beginning. But reality has a beginning. You see? And uh, the earth was waste and emptiness. Darkness was over the abyss, and the Spirit of God hovered above the waters. God still cared for it. There it is. It's dark, chaotic, and so forth. And now, the author, drawing on the tradition of so many of his predecessors who were not monotheists, who did not have the grace to understand that there's one Creator, uh, but who had meditated and thought a lot about the nature of this material universe. And so, let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light, Kitov, and it's good. This is such an affirmation. This material universe should not frighten us. Yes, it can be utilized by demonic forces, and demonic like human forces. But this material universe is God's gift. That's the meaning of the the resurrection and why the church says, when you listen to this text at the Paschal Vigil, think of the mighty work of Jesus Christ in an act of love, dying, rising, and giving back to creation its dignity and endowing it with power that it never had before. God called the day, the light, Yom, day, and the darkness he called Laila, night. And there was evening and morning the first day. Uh, The days are measured, you see, from nightfall. God said then, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters to divide the waters in two. Now this is using the best cosmology of the day. But the author has something much more profound in mind. He's trying to show us that the perfection of the universe is in contemplating and praising God. In and through us, this universe reaches its goal because God rested on the seventh day and told us to do the same. And so then the text goes through all the different things, huh? Made a dome, rakia. Uh, and there was evening, the second, evening and morning. And now, according to this cosmology now, the great mystery is water. It's so powerful. It's so necessary. And it can be so dangerous. All at the same time. Let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. In all of this, you see, the uh, the author is trying to mediate for us the power of God. God speaks, and it is. That can be said of nothing else in the universe. And let the earth be green with seed-bearing plants, all kinds of fruit trees that bear fruit containing their seed. What a mystery, isn't it? that the, these trees produce something that has within them the seed of a rebirth. Every one of these pears or peaches uh, can give rise to a whole other tree if it goes into the ground and dies. And so, uh, the earth brought forth verdant growth. 
God made all the kinds of wild animals and all kinds of tame beasts and every kind of creature creeping on the ground. And then God stops. And once again, taking counsel with himself, he said, let us make man in our image and as our likeness. That they, Adam is plural, that they may rule over the fish of the earth and the birds of the heavens, the tame beasts and the earth. God created Adam in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Adam is male and female. Adam is the ruler of the universe. Under God, he administers this universe, okay? Can you see then that control over this universe when you have abortion, an atomic bomb? Can you see the depth of evil? Can you see the abuse? And on this night, how we praise God for having restored the whole of the universe to us again. Okay. Behold, I have given to you, and that's a plural there, all the plants producing seeds which are on the face of the earth and all the trees on which there is the fruit of the tree producing seed. These will be food for you. But do you see? The peach falls into the ground. It has within it a seed, and that seed gives rise to life. That's an image of the resurrection. Jesus is the eternal seed who dies and rises and gives life. And so, uh, God saw all that he had made, and behold, how very good. And so there was evening and morning the sixth day. Thus were completed the heavens and the earth with all their array. God finished on the seventh day the work he had been doing. How did he finish? He's resting. Yes. You see, for us, uh, you work and the work finished and then you rest. No. Resting. Praising God. Giving glory to God. Relating to God. Talking to God. That's the purpose of creation. And that's why it says, you see, God finished on the seventh day. Because on the seventh day, there's no because in my text, he rested from the work he had done. God blessed the seventh day, just as he blessed Adam and Eve, made it fruitful, holy. Because on it he rested from all his work, which, which God created by making it. You see, God blessed the seventh day. It's fruitful. That's so important. Because, you see, from that we understand that the greatest activity in the world is appreciating and praising God. And that's why, you see, we, we measure the month, the, the year, uh, and the day by the movements of the stars, the sun, the planets, and so forth. But we measure Shabbat by a word of God. This seventh day, it's seventh because God said so. And it's Shabbat. It's the day we turn to God and offer our whole being and praise and rest with each other and give glory to God. That's Shabbat. But there is only a Shabbat in reality because Christ rose from the dead. You see, uh, as it says in the Eastern liturgy, Jesus observed Shabbat in the tomb that Saturday, and then he rose and started a new Shabbat. And so, uh, that is that first reading. Uh, then we move on uh, to look at the second reading. I'm going to say a word about the psalm, though, you see. Uh, the psalm, Psalm 33, the refrain is, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. You see? And then, uh, the, the text moves on um, to, uh, sorry, I forgot. 
the second text, which we'll, we'll take in just a moment. 